curtindo um podcast, né? Sabe o que você também vai curtir? Saber que o melhor flip de todos os tempos chegou. O novo Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 6, com flex cam, que tem zoom automático e faz selfies de 50 megapixels. E com bateria estendida para nunca te deixar na mão. Vá a uma loja ou saiba mais em samsung.com.br. Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 6. Galaxy AI chegou. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the JRPG Report. My name is Dalton, and I am back. And joining me, as always, is my good buddy. Hey, it's Michaela from Team Retro, and I feel like I haven't seen you in forever. Man, yeah, we got some catching up to do quickly. I want to give a shout out to one Nefarious, your co-host on the We Played a Game podcast. Yeah. Which I will let you plug here in a minute when we get to you. It's not your turn yet, sir, so you wait. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, but no, shout out to I him for. I missed you because now I'm starting to rethink that. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like the the uh, the growth that always comes back. Um, uh, big thanks to the Nefarious for filling in for me. Um, I was out of town and indisposed, and covered for me. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, man. It's uh, it's been it's been some ups and downs here recently. Uh, as everyone knows, I've kind of mentioned that I had been suffering from a severe lack of energy due to work. Um, the job that I had was very, very st- more strenuous than was advertised when I got when I applied for it. Right. And uh, long story short, I have my medical marijuana card here in Florida and I got hired with that medical marijuana card and having taken a drug test for work. Um, well, I was working one day. I got, <clears throat> I hurt my back uh, before I went on vacation. I hurt my back. Um, I let my supervisor know that the next day when I could barely get up out of bed that I wasn't coming in that day because I threw my back out. Well, apparently that was not the thing to say to them because they gave me that day off. And then the next day I had to report to uh, my supervisor and meet him for a uh, a meeting at this uh, it was called Care Spot, which when I pulled up there was a like a medical an urgent medical center facility type thing. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, okay, they're going to go in here, they're going to have me meet up with a doctor, they're going to get me checked out, then all will be gravy, right? Um, and then I figured I would have to take a drug test, as per goes with getting hurt at work. That is not what happened. We showed up an hour before they opened. I then was told to get into my supervisor's car with him. And I called a nurse's hotline and described to them my injury over the phone. And they gave me a clean bill of health. I was fine. Just stretch and I'll be fine. And then my supervisor, we then sat and waited for the place to open up. Then we went inside and took my drug test. And my supervisor was being very impatient about this whole thing, like we were wasting time. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they're all about production, steady moving, steady moving. Don't you dare take a lunch break. What are you talking about? Um, And again, like yada, yada, yada. I go on vacation. I have a great time in St. Augustine. Um, I really recommend going and checking out St. Augustine. If you want to hear about my um, trip without me bogging down this show too much with it, go listen to the most recent Steam Machine podcast about Celeste. And I talk all about my trip to St. Augustine and the ghost tour I did and all that good stuff. Um, I get back from vacation. I work one day. And the next day after that, from coming, from coming back from my vacation, I am on my way to work at 5 in the morning. I had already driven 35 minutes towards my first destination. I get a phone call. I had been terminated. Didn't give me a reason why, but I know the reason why. I'm not dumb. I hurt my back. It's a physical job. I am immediately a a liability to the company. Even though they hired me failing a drug test, they took me failing a drug test when I got hurt as a way to get out of it. And that's just, that's just, that's life. That's that's what happened. That is what it is. Kind of not fair. It's making me really want to switch to Pepsi. Yeah. Pepsi's better anyway. No, it's not. Yeah. Diet Pepsi is 100% better than Diet Coke. It tastes like syrup. 
Diet Coke is sweeter than Diet Pepsi. What are you talking about? Now, I will give you this. Regular Pepsi, way sweeter than regular Coke. But it's the opposite with diet, to me at least. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but I'm seriously thinking about suffering and switching over to Pepsi just because of the injustice. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you, Coke is the third oldest soda brand in the world. Do you know what the first two are? Tab. Nope. Tab is a Coke product, sir. Huh? Tab was a Coke product. Is it really? Yeah. (laughs) Uh, If not Coca-Cola, is Pepsi one of them? No. Really? A&W? One of them is a now a subsidiary under Pepsi. Mountain Dew? So the third oldest is Coke. The second oldest soda in the country is Dr. Pepper. I thought Dr. Pepper Do- was owned by one of the two. Dr. Pepper is bottled by Pepsi. They are ah. their own company, though. Huh. Like, that's what I'm saying. It is a subsidiary of Pepsi, but they are their own thing. Maybe I'll just switch to Dr. Pepper then. Um, oldest soda in the country, sir, is Verner's Ginger Ale. I have never seen that in my life. So It's like a solid green box. It says Verner's with like a, a barrel on it. Huh. Mm-hmm. I wonder if we get it, that up here. It's interesting tasting. Like, it does not... So Canada Dry is like what everybody thinks of when they think of ginger ale. I know right. that's like the go-to for most people. And then some people like Schweppes. Yeah. And stuff. But Verner's is like OG ginger ale when you taste it. It's not sugary, sweet, delicious. It's like it's real ginger ale. It's almost like it's it's more akin to me to ginger beer. Got it. <clears throat> yeah, and ginger beer has a definite different unique, taste. <laughs> unique taste yeah. to it. Absolutely. I remember when I was visiting Ryan up north, up there with, by, you know, uh, Rochester. And he was like, you ever had ginger beer? And he gives me a sip of his and I was like, oh Ugh. my goodness. It was like a punch in the tongue. Yep. I was like, oh, that is like, re-. he's like really gingery, right? I was like, yeah, son. Yeah, no, the Ooh. only way to really enjoy ginger beer is with a good rum. I can see that. I can see it being a good mixer. Yeah. It's a good mixer, but like on its own, why? Why would you want this? So, but yeah, man, that's uh, that's what I've been up to. That and playing Ewan Chronicle. Yeah, I saw that today. How is yeah, that? So, my uh, my buddy Nate that I do the Steam Machine podcast with, I guess felt ba- felt bad for me. He told me that quote, "You need a win, and if I can help, I want to help." So he asked me, because I had said, I feel I was like, I feel like playing a JRPG, but I don't know what I want to play. I said, Star Ocean, I really want to get to, but that is a big, long commitment. Right. That's a long game. Right. And uh, that particular Star Ocean that you got me has 80-something endings, and I'd like to see them all at some point. So, like, that's a, com- that's a commitment. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know what I want to play. And Nate's like, well, is there anything that just came out recently that you're interested in? And I was like, I mean, yeah, but I don't have any money. He said, let me rephrase that. <laughs> Is there something that I can buy for you? And he, then he called me a word that I won't repeat on this show. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I mean, I don't, you don't have to do that. He's, then that was when he was like, you need to win, dude. Just, just tell me. So I was like, ah, what about you in Chronicle? He goes, perfect. It's on sale on Fanatical. So he shot it over to me. Dude, I'm really enjoying it so far. So I have no experience with Suikoden. Yeah. But that was one of those series that I have in my list of uh, when I do, now that I have time. Maybe we can start up doing this whenever you have some free time at night. Um, the Let's Plays for yes. the Patreon. I was thinking that Suikoden is one of those games that I had never played. So it might be fun for us to play through it. You know what I'm saying? And and don't get me wrong. I don't want I want you to help me make decisions and stuff because like I'll play. Or if there's a way that we can send the save back and forth and maybe one episode you play and one episode I play. I don't know. We'll I'm figure sure, it out. I'm sure and, we could do that. Yeah, we'll hash but that yeah, out. There was, there's, there's a very potential way we can make this happen. But Suikoden was one of those games that I was like, I've always heard Suikoden 2 is like pinnacle of PlayStation JRPGs. That's what I've it's heard too. one of the best. So I was just... Then Tadpog, shout out Tadpog, Tyler and Dave play old games. Um, it's a comedy video game podcast, but I would like to stress that the hosts are not experts. They are just very crass commentators. <laughs> As we're told every episode. It's an explicit pod te- podcast that happens to talk about video games sometimes. So go enjoy a pretty okay podcast with Tyler and Dave. Do they um, listen to this so, show? No. We should probably no, tell probably them to it, listen. It would make them giggle regardless. But like, uh, 
they did a Patreon only video back in the day where they went through and cast the 101 stars. So like all of the party members from Sweet in Two that you can get the 101 or 106 star, whatever it is, they cast everybody as an actor. Nice. And it was hysterical. So now I'm excited because I'm playing Ewan and Chronicle and I'm like, oh yeah, this is another one of those games where there are just like a buttload of party members to find and get in because it's inspired by Suikoden. I think some people that worked on Suikoden worked on this game. The art style, bro. Magnifico. It's beautiful. And I got an achievement. There are cats and dogs all over the place in the towns and I got an achievement for talking to 10 animals. And I was like, heck yeah. And almost all of them I won't say every single animal I've come across, but almost all of the cats and dogs have had unique names. Okay. Which I thought was cool. It's not just like cat, dog. I did come across one that I think just said dog, but like all of the cats have had names. (laughs) That's actually pretty cool. And I just, that's just a dumb little, just a little thing that I like, you know? Yeah. It's one of those little Uh, touches that they put in video games just to increase the charm. Uh, one thing I found interesting about the game is that there is a auto battle mechanic. So when you go into a fight, you get a choice for fight, auto, or flee. Um, of course, if you click fight, you're controlling it you know, yourself. And you have six party members, three in the front row, three in the back row. Um, and you're going to want to sort them out based on what they do. Yada, yada, yada. Everybody knows. You're listening to the JRPG report. You know how JRPG formations go. <laughs> um, but the uh, my brain just blanked. Three in the front, three in the back, auto battle. Auto battle, thank you. Um, but it's almost got like a gambit system, like Final Fantasy twelve, where you can go in and set up how your party members act when you're doing auto battling. And then when you're just going through and farming and doing regular battles, you can just auto battle them if you want. And then boss battles, you can take in and go in and do the stuff if you really you know, want to. Or you can auto battle those too. You could auto battle every fight in this game if you wanted to. I don't recommend it. You might die a lot. But you could do it. But you could do it. And if you set up your stuff right, you could absolutely do it. Um, Sounds like it's a good mechanic for when you're trying to grind or level up or something. Absolutely. It, it helps like monotony. Yeah. Because you can you can be doing something else while you're grinding and you can just hit auto and let it go and do the battle. And then you just run around, find another battle, hit auto, go back to doing what you're doing. Yeah, it's it's nice. That's. I've been watching anime and playing Ewan and Chronicle. <laughs> You're just like all in. Drinking I am, some, dude. I drinking some Pepsi. <laughs> I have I have some Pepsi Mango in the fridge right now. Nice. I know that sounds weird, mango flavored Pepsi, but bro, you take one sip of it and you're like, this should be poured over vanilla ice cream immediately. That so sounds like I got me some vanilla. I, good. I got me some vanilla ice cream, so I'm gonna try it. Please report back. I shall. That, that's our I top. Shall. That's our top story. Mango Pepsi with vanilla ice cream. <laughs> it's the breaking news. Breaking news. It's the, the new the new trend. I'm setting all the fads. So how are you, my good sir? I am exhausted. The, the, I know this is an audio-only podcast, but for you, specifically Dalton, you could probably tell my stance is very different right now from yeah. when we usually record. And that yeah, you're v- is... Lean back to the side. Yeah. yeah, that is out of sheer, total, absolute fatigue. The month of What's May. What's been kicking your butt? Oh, the month of May. Kicks my butt just, every year. So, I guess because it's getting getting towards the end of the school year. Yeah. Lots of stuff like that. And pollen. <laughs> pollen. Yeah, the weather up here hasn't decided what it wants to be. One day it's cold, the next day it's too hot. Then we get like three straight days of rain which kicks up all the pollen. And so on top of that, uh, we had prom second Friday in May, and I couldn't get a sitter. And my wife was working late. So I bought a suit and brought my son to prom. Nice. Which, all well and good. He had a good time, but I was so tired from chasing him around. Oh, I can only imagine, bro. (laughs) None of the little high school girls wanted to, oh, he's so cute. Oh, yeah, they were all over him. Yeah, like he, he, I bet. he was not wanting for attention that night. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I don't know, like three different birthday parties. My dog got sick. Um, I've been trying to tell 
doctors for months now, at least three months, that my dog had a, a UTI, and nobody would believe me. They did a urinalysis. They didn't find anything. They did blood work. They didn't find anything. They put him on, like, an incontinence med. It did nothing. So finally, they referred him to a specialist, and I took today off of work so I can go and bring him. And long story short, I ended up dropping $1,500 for an ultrasound, a urine culture, just for them to say, oh, yeah, he has a UTI. Here's Ooh. the real kick in the pants. My primary care vet could have done all of these procedures for half the price, but instead they referred me to an ER. Gotta make that money. But they probably get paid for referrals. You know, I'm starting to think that's what it is because when they did the referral, mm -hmm. they were like, we work very closely with this hospital. There you go. And so, your answer. yeah, I am definitely very broke. So, <laughs> patreon.com slash team retro. <laughs> <laughs> go, go give homeboy some money. I am also very broke. We'll cover that later. <laughs> Patreon.com slash JRPG report. <laughs> Get each of us a coffee. We'll uh <laughs> we'll live to fight another day. Yeah. Please help me help me keep the lights on. Oh. I don't need a coffee. I need an electric bill paid. <laughs> oh, literally and figuratively. Oh. Yeah. Speaking of which, uh, we ready smooth? to get into it? Absolutely, my good sir. We uh, we don't have a ton this week, but we still I I wanted to get back into the swing of things, so let's get this shindig started. A with Square Enix will release the PC versions of Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5 Remix, Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue, and Kingdom Hearts 3 Plus Remind via Steam. On June 13th, the company has announced each will be available to purchase individually or together as the all-in-one Kingdom Hearts Integrum Masterpiece Collection. Uh, each title is currently available for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC via the Epic Games Store, as well as for Switch as the cloud versions, which I do not recommend. Uh, they are uh, pretty much... Um, what's dog the word poop. I'm looking for? They're dog poop. Um, they are globally panned. Overwhelmingly yeah. panned. And um, I don't know why that is, because it's a cloud version. It's being stored on a server, but I I guess it has something to do with the, the Switch's Wi-Fi versus the server latency and all that. It's just, it ends yeah. up not being a good experience. It's, Plus, it, I don't think any cloud gaming on the Switch makes sense, because I don't think the Switch has capable enough Wi-Fi to handle it in it general. barely handles its own online. Yeah. The Nintendo store takes forever sometimes. Yeah. Oh, N Nintendo. I don't know. They've been on a... T I know I'm changing the subject a little bit, but they've been on a mad tear lately with lawsuits. Yeah. Yeah. They uh, they hit Vim's lair. Yeah. Which um, and, was kind of know, a blow because that's, cool. that site has been just kind of a... Not so much like a haven for piracy, but it's, it's a database. Like... That's yeah. all about preservation. It's not about piracy. It's literally a. It's like vault. the archive.org for gaming. Exactly. Like. Yeah. He's more about. Well, I can't speak for him. I don't know what he's about, but but he is more about preservation and the fact that he had to take down like a good chunk of his library. It's just it's sad. Like he's been operating for decades at this point. Yeah, you can tell by the look of his website. Yeah. It hasn't been updated since like two thousand eight. Oh no! Looks wise. Not even a little run, bit. But it it's... works fine. Yeah, it his works server, fine. His server works better than Nintendo on their Switch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and that's the thing. Like, he doesn't have anything current on there. Like, he only puts stuff up when it's no longer in production. So yeah, I, I don't know. I, I uh, you could have left him alone. You already went after Yuzu. Like, I don't know. But anyway, so, King Kingdom Farts. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't need to go into all of the different editions and what they are. You should, you all should probably know that by now. Um, if not, you know, looking in Kingdom Hearts, it's a great series. But this uh, this article gives a breakdown of what each game is. Um, but I will say that the last bit of news in this I would like to point out is that a trailer 
for the Steam versions was put up on YouTube, and it has a new, uh, a newly recorded version of Simple and Clean. Ooh. Which everybody everybody loves Simple and Clean, so. Well, you know, because it's... A banger. It's, uh, it's not complicated and dirty. <laughs> All right, I'm going to let you read the next one. <laughs> All right, let's see if I, uh, <laughs> how many names I could butcher today. Oh, Neptunia. Okay. Oh, this is bad news. Yeah, unfortunately. The Switch release of the three Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth games have suddenly been postponed in the West. Idea Factory International has suddenly released a notice that the Western releases of Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 1 Rebirth 2 Sister's Generation and Rebirth 3 V Generation on the Nintendo eShop has been postponed until further notice. The trio of titles were slated to release yesterday for the Nintendo Switch, but have now been delayed to a further undisclosed date. Their releases on Switch would have been another way to play the entire mainline Neptunia games on the go. They were released previously on PlayStation Vita, and their Steam releases are compatible with the Steam Deck. I bet this is because we are probably by this time next year going to have a Switch 2. That's a possibility. And I'm thinking they're waiting for that to release these. I think they're going to release them for that. Which I guess I can I could kind of understand because this late in the Switch's life cycle, I can't imagine people buying new games for the Switch right now. They're probably like biding their time. And there's Nintendo is releasing nothing this year as far as games. Like there's no Pokemon game till next year, which is very unlike them. Well, I mean, uh, they did just drop the Paper Mario remake. They did just drop the Paper Mario remake, but that's all we have to look forward to are remakes. Like there's a Luigi's Mansion 2 remake. Um, they released Super Mario RPG earlier in the year. Like they're well, that's their thing right now. That's their thing right now is is dropping the remakes of older titles. It's like this is just their slow period before the next system comes out. So, I don't know. If I were a game developer and I knew that my game sales were going to tank on an aging system, I more than likely would wait until the next one came out myself. So, I, I could kind of understand it. It still kind of stinks for Switch owners. Uh, but it is still on. If they are still on Steam, if you really want to get your nep nep on, uh, I don't know. Any other comments, thoughts, disappointments? Yeah, my only other thing is, I can't recommend this series enough. <laughs> um, I just want to like again. I anytime it comes up, I bring it up. Um, and now I have concrete proof that uh, when Steam Machine covered Mega Dimension Neptunia Victory Two V Two. Um, I was fully going into that episode expecting to be the only one who liked it, and yet you liked it. I liked it. Nate liked it way more than I thought he was going to, and so did Willie. So, again, I just want to throw out there, try the Neptunia series if you haven't. It's just cheeky good fun. One of these days I'll finish it, but those the, the characters in the storytelling are what makes that game endearing. The gameplay, it's okay. Oh, it's a it's a mediocre, you know, turn based RPG uh, gameplay wise. Yeah, but the story and the characters are really what keep you around. Yeah, I I would say not even so much the story, just the characters. <clears throat> like they are written in such a way that you get invested. Yeah, you laugh Love when they laugh. You get upset when they get upset. Like, yeah, I I'm with you, doll, and I can't speak enough good about the Neptunia series, and it's something I knew nothing about until we played it for Steam Machine. Yes, sir. All right, up next. <clears throat> Shift Up is exploring the possibility of both a... Or, okay, yeah, so I, I was reading that right. My eyes were just playing tricks, tricks on me. Take two. Shift Up is exploring the possibility of both a PC version of Stellar Blade and a sequel, in addition to its previously confirmed cross-platform project newly codenamed Project Witches. The studio has revealed in its initial public offering filing on the Korea Composite Stock Price Index, whatever that means. According to the filing project, which is currently in early stages of development with plans to launch globally across console, PC, and mobile with crossplay in 2027 or later. 
It is described as Shift Up's next generation mega subculture intellectual property that will surpass Goddess of Victory Nikki. Uh, with examples of subculture intellectual property being games like Genshin Impact, Honkai Star Rail, and Fate Grind Order. Shift Up hopes to ramp up development in 2024 by attracting new hires. As for Stellar Blade, plans for a PC version and a sequel are listed under consideration with a release date not yet determined. Um, the document reads, For Stellar Blade, we have plans to introduce new gameplay elements, including downloadable content releases, a PC version, and new collaborations. Meanwhile, the company's global one-build approach allows for simultaneous global updates to ensure a consistent game experience for users and rapid deployment of content at a low cost. Uh, later on, it reads that AAA console titles such as God of War and Final Fantasy have shown tremendous potential, selling over 66 million copies and 185 million copies, respectively. Uh, there are many precedents for AAA titles to evolve into franchises by extending their lifespan through a series of high-quality sequels and maintaining a long-term monetization base. As a result, we are exploring the possibility of a PC version of Stellar Blade and a sequel. Man, that was a long way to say the same thing they said earlier. Yeah, interesting written article. Stellar Blade launched launched for PlayStation 5 on April 26th and is published by Sony Interactive Entertainment and according to the filing, sales have exceeded Shift Up's expectations. Now correct me if I'm wrong, good sir. Stellar Blade's the game that caused the big hubbub about the censorship, right? Yes. I thought so. Yeah, no, it definitely did. So, I I didn't follow Stellar Blade enough to really understand what's going on, but yeah, I don't think what we got is what they got in Japan. Down the censorship. And you know what? It's First of all, it's an exclusive. I don't know what the rating is on it, but like... I, I'm not a fan of censorship in games because we have a rating system. Like, yeah. there is stuff on the back. Like, I get, like, having a high rating is going to impact the sales of your game, but I don't know. Like, censorship has existed since they were replacing artwork in Yu-Gi-Oh! and replacing stuff in Castlevania games. I don't know. I, I don't get it, but it is what it is. So... Next up, Renatus releases in the West on September 27th and will have crossover content from NEO, The World Ends With You. NAS America has shared an English release date trailer, which you can find on YouTube. Uh, NAS America has confirmed the Western release date for Renatus. The new action RPG will be available for PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and PC via Steam in North America and Europe on September 27th. In addition, the company also announces there will be an in-game crossover content from Square Enix's NEO The World Ends With You. While the company is used to publish collaborative artwork as an April Fool's Day prank, this crossover turns out to be completely legit. So, there is uh, an English release date trailer and if you're a fan of Renatus and you're a fan of Neo The World Ends With You, this might be for you. I was going to say, you said Neo The World Ends With You, and I was like, is it Neo or is it Neo? Is it Neo? I'm t- I actually don't know. <laughs> I actually don't know. You had me questioning myself. <laughs> now like, you have me questioning me. Well, listeners, let us know. Is it Neo or is it Neo? I'm going to get screamed at. No, I'm not going to get screamed at. People who watch this, get- to listen to the show are very chill. No, everybody who listens to this show is an outstanding human being. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, definitely uh, keep an eye out. I mean, this from the screenshots, it looks interesting. Like, I'll check it out. I have to watch the trailer. This way. I, I'm a bad person. I should have watched the trailer before we started. I'm a bad man. Listen, Nefarious, when he was on the show, like, he did his diligence. He, like watched everything and did his research beforehand. He like wanted the articles like a day in advance. He was freaking out. I'm like, it's not that bad. You don't need to go into I, it. I appreciate that gusto. Yeah. I appreciate so. that gusto. So up next we got Axis Games has revealed today that their previously announced upcoming localization for the Nintendo Switch version of Tokyo Xanadu EX Plus, which was tentatively dated for this summer, will launch on July twenty fifth. This release comes with a completely revamped localization by a previous member of the Geofront Falcom fan translation team. 
as of now, there has been no new news. Also, real quick, shout out to the GeoFront guys for actually getting legit jobs in game translation. Yeah. Because they all did and, and still do wonderful work. Um, there's been no news whether this updated translation will be added to the previously released versions of the game, though. Uh, while the game hasn't even released in Japan yet, with the upcoming following, or excuse me, the upcoming follow-up having been properly announced in March, hopefully the improved translation will make its way to other platforms before any localization for that project can be announced. Uh, features of the Switch version include new scenarios, enjoy unique tales of the wielders that weren't depicted in the main story, and once you've completed the game, gain access to all new quests and carry on the adventure. New playable characters, new monsters, dungeons, and bosses. Play as the mysterious knight, White Shroud. Brandish unrivaled strength and the powers of light to take down vile monsters and vicious bosses. Plus new dungeons filled with fierce new monster types and giant bosses to battle. And a new boss battle mode. Revisit battles with various bosses that appear in the main story. The time you spend on each battle is recorded. How fast can you defeat each boss? This mode also features boss rush, where you can battle bosses one after the other. Like a good old fashioned slobber knocker match in Smackdown 2, know your role. Action RPG? That is a joke for a uh, Tokyo Xanadu? Yeah. Yes. I was going to say, it sounds action RPG-ish. Think, think uh, Persona-esque, but with action RPG stuff. So, like that uh, Persona Strikers game that's like yeah, Dynasty Warriors, that's, but it's Persona? That's more Dynasty Warriors-esque. This is a little less combat heavy than that. Gotcha. So, uh... I only say Persona-esque because there's like a party that you build up with and gotcha that you you're in shibuya or you know or somewhere in japan oh like yeah so a- you're Akihabara, so. you're in yeah it's it's a it's yeah. a it takes place in tokyo type of thing Heck, hence the name tokyo xanadu yes look at look at me go <laughs> using my brain look at you you're a regular old sherlock holmes over here <laughs> using my forebrain all right so this next one looks interesting to me personally but i don't know how many of you are actually going to be interested in it and you don't have to read everything if you don't want to so no um the only part i really want to focus on well, first of all this this uh, game uh kemibako mythology of cube uh is coming out in japan for ps5 ps4 switch pc via steam on august 29th um this game will task the player to restore a world that has been fragmented into cubes and flat images. The protagonist can gradually restore features in the overworld like roads and trees by simply approaching them, but the more complex fragmentation will have to be restored by playing puzzle games. The player will also be able to build their own villages and towns in undeveloped lands. So there is a Japanese uh, release date announcement trailer. Um, There are some English stream screenshots and a Steam fact sheet uh, pretty much within this article. But just from looking at the screenshots, first of all, this is a beautiful looking puzzle game. Like, I'm just... Yeah, it really is. I'm just looking at, like, the numbers and the symbols, and it's very high-res. The character art looks great. Um, There is a... what appears to be a level of turn-based... Uh, fighting in it in addition to the puzzles there's uh i don't know it's just a beautiful looking game like i have always been a fan of games that really make their item icons and their material icons look pretty yeah i agree and that's exactly what's happening here it's not just the artwork but it's like just the the elements and the symbols and the enemies and like just the icons for wood are gorgeous looking the font i mean that looks like a pretty regular font but just the way that it it all kind of meshes together it's a well designed little game and uh it looks like the demo is up on steam right now but english language not supported at the moment uh, uh, but according to the article, it does say that the game's website has indicated that the game will also be available in Korean, traditional Chinese, and simplified Chinese, in addition to Japanese and English. So that's probably coming later. I'm wondering if this is one of those games where uh, it's coming out on Switch. So this might be a Play Asia import for me. 
Oh, that would be cool if they did a physical version of it. If they did a physical version of it, and it's available on Play Asia, which I just ordered. Um, well, I ordered it last month, but I don't think it's coming until next month. Um, I ordered a physical copy of Monster Hunter Stories for the Switch, and a physical copy of Dave the Diver for the Switch on Play Asia. Because I wanted physical copies and they're not available in US physical copies or will not be available in US physical copies. So huh. the uh, the Asian versions are region free and they have English language as an option. So I've uh, I've never looked at Play Asia, but I've been meaning to because like I'm sure there's like a bunch of anime or Japanese style games that I would be very interested in that probably come through there that I'll never know because I don't go and look. I don't remember the last thing I ordered from... Oh, I remember the last thing I ordered from Play Asia. It was the uh, physical version of the Final Fantasies 1 through 6 pixel remaster on Switch. Because the Engl- the US version only released so many copies on Square Enix's website. And of course, they sold out within like 30 seconds. So, this was the only way I was going to get my hands on that game. <clears throat> I got you. So. so, sir, our final... Our final news of the day. Another one that's not exactly happy, but this is kind of like a, this is what you get with the times type thing. Atlas has announced that they will be delisting the original standard and digital deluxe versions of Shin Megami Tensei V and all of its DLC that it released uh, for it on June 13th of this year. Uh, This title initially released November 11th, 2021, and its updated release, Shin Megami Tensei V Vengeance, is launching on June 14th, 2024. Um, people who have already purchased Shin Megami Tensei V and any of its DLC digitally can continue to re-download them, even after it has been delisted. But Shin Megami Tensei V Vengeance includes the entire base uh, SMT5 game, four previously paid DLCs from the original version, a brand new Canon of Vengeance full campaign, and a plethora of enhancements, adjustments, and quality of life tweaks. Additionally, Shin Megami Tensei V Vengeance expands the Demi Fiend's presence beyond just a high-level super boss fight, as players will be able to add the Demi Fiend to their party, too. Um, Shin Megami Tensei V Vengeance is not a Switch exclusive anymore. Uh, it will now come out on June 14th for PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series X. An S, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC via Steam. Now, I have a couple things to say about this. One, I'm happy that Shin Megami Tensei is no longer, and pardon the, the phrasing, but is no longer damned to be just on Nintendo. Agreed. Okay? Big shout out to that. Um, second thing is, this is exactly why I never bought Shin Megami Tensei Five. It's because Atlas always does this. I learned my lesson with Persona 5, right? Because then I ended up by Persona 5 Royal. And then Same I started here. to look at the track. I looked at the track record with four and then four golden, three, then three FES. So I'm like, okay. So now when Atlas releases a new game in the SMT slash Persona series, I might wait and then just grab when they do the Ultra Deluxe Super Mega Special Edition. I will say, though, that they finally, finally got it right. I know we've talked about this on the show before with Persona 3 Reload. Yeah, they put everything in one. They did, but the answer is DLC. And granted, it's going to be paid DLC, but at least you don't have to buy and go through the whole game over again. Yeah. That's the only reason I haven't picked up... I mean, I have it, I own it, but the only reason I haven't replayed... Persona 5 Royals because I already beat it. So yeah. why do I have to go through all of it again just to see a little bit of extra content? My my thing with Royal was trying to do it for the show because I had already played through it and I know the story and all that, I was using a 100% guide to get all the Steam achievements. And even then, I got to Futaba's place and I think I checked out about there. And yeah. I'll go back to it eventually. But... um. And then yeah, a and game th- like that is hard to do for a podcast because it just takes so long. Yeah, that that's one that I think I'm just going to end up having to gather people who have already beaten it mm. and talk about it at some point. You know, I think Nate will beat it eventually. I can't say the same for Willie, but I think Nate will beat it eventually. Um, the, the only other thing I have to say about this is 
this is one of the downsides to digital media. But at at the same time, they are removing the old version and putting up a new version. Whereas, like the old version, you'd have to do, buy that and then buy all the DLC separately if you wanted it and all that. Whereas now, you can just get this new version has everything in one, right? And unless this new version of Shin Megami Tensei Five turns out to be this weird buggy mess that's terrible, I don't see this one being that big of a deal that they're pulling it uh, the original down. I'm... There are other cases where this could set a precedent. Yeah. I mean, the precedent is already set, though. So I don't yeah. know what I'm talking about. Well, I'm more concerned with collectors. Because what's going to happen to the physical version of the original SMT5 when it's delisted from the eShop and the only way to get that old original version is through physical media and you're kind of beat when that price goes up. Now, obviously, yeah. at that point, just get vengeance, whatever. Yeah. But I'm sure there's <laughs> collectors out there that are going to want to have this original. Plus, what if you're that random person who goes into a game store, sees Vengeance, and then sees a pre-owned version of 5, and the pre-owned version of 5 is cheaper, you pick that up, you take that home, you play it, and you realize that you are locked up of a lot of stuff because it's all delisted. Well, I think that goes to the argument that I always hear Metal Jesus have on YouTube, him and his buddies. Right. Um, And that is that when these special editions of games come out or these games come out that have like DLC and stuff that all of that extra stuff needs to be on the disc. Right. Not you, you put your disc in and then it downloads all of the DLC because that's going to cause the issue where if that server is gone, you're no longer going to have access to download all of that. But if you bought the edition that comes with all of that stuff, it should be on the disc. So Agreed. you have access to all of it at any time. And like I don't disagree with that. I think if you're selling a, a game where you're like, okay, so Shin Megami Tensei Five Vengeance, it comes with all the previous DLC. That should be on that cart. It should be on that disc. And not like you put it in and then it has to do an update and download all of it. Because then you're screwed. There's there's some games where it's like they're, they're chapters. You know, the games that were like released in parts, like the uh, the remake of the first Hitman game. Not a remake, but with a reboot. Yeah. When they did Hitman 1, it was released in chapters. And then they released them all where you could just buy the game and it put all the chapters together. If I remember right, it was the disc of that one, if you got it for PS4, had nine chapters, but that tenth chapter was downloaded. The Switch version of uh, the Borderlands collection, which I believe is Borderlands 1, 2, and the pre-sequel... You buy the physical version of that, you get Borderlands 1 on the disc. The cartridge says Borderlands Collection, but you pop it in and you only get one. It's the only game on the on the on the cartridge. What you get in the box are two download codes for two and pre-sequel. So you buy that game pre-owned, those codes are used, you're only getting Borderlands 1. How many how many extra pennies? Would it have cost them to put two other carts in that? They would have had to... And and CD Projekt Red did this when they ported Witcher 3 over to the Switch. They could have sprung for a bigger capacity Switch cart. But because those carts are more expensive per cartridge, and you have to manufacture so many, they bought the cheaper cartridge, squeezed Borderlands 1 onto it, and said, we're just doing download codes. So they did it for the profit. Whereas CD no, I, Project I get... Red was like, we're springing for that big cart and we're putting all of The Witcher 3, all of the two DLCs, and everything you need to play the complete version of this game, we're putting it on that Switch cartridge and we are springing for the bigger Switch cartridge. And it's and it's all on the cart. It's all on the cart. Yeah, ex- it, my point exactly. The thing with Borderlands, though, is that if they weren't going to cram all three games onto one cart, they could have spent an extra 10 cents per unit and had three carts in there, one for each game. Because if they used the cheap carts, dude, those carts only cost, you know, pennies to make. They're probably pennies on the dollar or like, you know, a certain amount of cents, yeah. But yeah. you, you got to keep in mind, how many are you buying? 
Yeah, but how much profit are they going to make regardless? That's true. Yeah, that's true. Like, physical collectors would be more apt to buy those because it's three physical versions of these games. Yeah. I mean, they used to do it with CDs all the time. Yeah. So. What if Final Fantasy VII came out and you had to pay... <laughs> Wait a minute. What, what, what if Final Fantasy VII came out and you had to pay $60 three times to be... <laughs> Wait wait a minute. I I swear that was not a joke when I first went into that. And then it occurred to me, oh wait, that's exactly what Square Enix is doing right now. (laughs) (laughs) Wait a minute. Brilliant. Wait a second. (laughs) That is happening. (laughs) Yeah, dude. It's Oh, That that was funny. That was a good way to end the show. Get a good little chuckle. Yeah, for real. I'm, uh, <laughs> oh, current. you want to bring us home, good sir? Yeah, I'm currently looking for the thing that I always forget to pull up before we start recording. It's called JRPG Report Stuffs. Yes, it is. Mm. And I think I moved it to this screen over here. No, I did not. Where? Oh, there it is. All right. I needed to put it. So anytime I like make my desktop icons and i just like order them uh sort them yeah it it throws me off gotcha (laughs) so you want to check us out over on facebook with all of the tumbleweeds it is facebook.com slash jrpg report you want to check us out over on twitter where i am much much more active uh which is not saying a lot but it is you know something at at jrpg report if you would like to support the show, which uh, at the moment would literally help me keep the lights on and keep this show going. So do you enjoy the show? Would you like to keep hearing the show? <laughs> Please donate a dollar or more a month. Uh, that would really mean the world to me and my family right now. Uh, and that is patreon.com slash JRPG report. Um, I'm going to start trying to get more things on there for you guys to make it more uh, worth worth your time. I mean... Throw some money there to support the show, but I would like things for there to be for extra for you guys who do pay money because I do very much appreciate it. It uh, it, it literally helps me pay bills. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and I want to give a shout out to people who are patrons. And this is one of the perks you get. If you donate, you get your name read on each and every episode like Jake, W. Jordan, K, Kularian, and Master Loot and Kana. Thank you very, very much. I would also like to give a shout out to the Steam Machine podcast. My bi-weekly PC gaming show where me and my two buddies, Nate and Willie, and whatever guests we decide to loop in every now and then, uh, talk about some talk about the games we're playing. We're playing through our backlog. Um, we recently did Celeste, uh, which was an interesting romp, and we are now currently battling our way through Monster Hunter World, which one Mikolov of the JRPG Report and We Played a Game podcast will be joining us for. Love that game. I'm thrilled that you're actually playing it. It's been interesting. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. That's the tease. It's been interesting to me so far. I have thoughts. <clears throat> I have thoughts. And I can't wait to give them to the world. Yeah. <laughs> this, that's going to be a fun episode, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. And then I have to decide what my pick is going to be. And I'm torn. I am very, very torn. I am torn between two sports games. Sports games, okay. I was going to say. I know, right? Weird. But I am torn between that, two sports that games. That is very weird. And I was more thinking that you were going to go towards a certain JRPG that the two of us kind of want to play. Ooh, that's not a bad idea either. That's not a bad idea either because that would be one that I could throw in a game in the middle. Yeah. And bust and bust out a month because I know, I know you're talking about... Um, uh, there's there's two letters in the title. Yes, yes, and yes. and the and the number eight. Yeah, I know, I know yeah. you're I know what you're I know what you're hinting towards. You're picking up what I'm putting down. That's another strong contender, and I could throw either of my sports titles in the middle of that. So that's not a bad idea. Huh? Well, uh, we'll we'll hash this out off here. Uh, ideas are brewing. Stay tuned. Yes, yes, yes. My creative juices are flowing now that I actually have energy and I feel like a living human being again. So. Uh, the wounds it, are healing, the physical and the mental ones. Yeah, my back still hurts like hell, but everything else is getting better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what about you, sir? We got to plug your stuff. Uh, Team Retro on YouTube, and as Dalton mentioned earlier, we are starting up, Nefarious and I, a podcast called We Played a Game. 
And next episode, we are playing an old Super Nintendo game called Illusion of Gaia. So, yeah, baby. If you so good. want to hear more of my pontificating and Nefarious's uh, witty sarcasm, then tune on in. We're on Apple, we're on Spotify, and we are on YouTube. And I just uh, surpassed 3,000 subs on YouTube at Team Retro. So my goal is to get to 10,000 subs by the end of 2024. So if you can do your part and head on over to Team Retro and click that sub button, I would very much appreciate it. Man, it'd be cool to see you get the button one day. The silver button. I, the gold button might be a little hard, but the silver button. Totally There's, achievable. You get a button? You've never seen the, the YouTube plaque that people get when they hit 100,000 subs? Oh, yeah. You get the YouTube, you get the play button? Yeah, 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 you yeah, hit, yeah, yeah. You hit, a, you hit a million subs, you get a uh, a gold one. And then I know WWE recently hit like some ridiculous number of like a billion or a trillion views total or something like that. And YouTube sent them like this ruby looking play button. It was the coolest looking thing. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I'll have to find a picture of it and send it to you. It yeah. was super cool looking. But yeah, man, dude, I totally think you get 100,000 subs, bro. You could hit that. I know you're wanting 10, but I'm talking. Yeah. It's long slow, term. It's slow going, but the the numbers are trending up. They're not trending down, so that's a good thing. Hey, you're doing better than my podcast. Hey, your podcast <laughs> is doing very well. <laughs> Listen, it's uh, a lot harder to get viewership on a podcast than it is on like a 12 to 15 minute YouTube video. Ooh, I'm, I don't know about that. I'm I'm learning that. <laughs> it's just all about uh it's it's hard it's hard YouTube and podcasting is both hard because you're you're in a vast sea of content and you got to try to make your nook in the octopus garden, you know. And keep people's attention. Mhm. Mm so Yeah, for sure. So thank you listeners for allowing us to keep your attention. Yeah, so while we have your attention, I just have one thing to ask of you all, and that is to get back out there and level up.